Hello and welcome back to this uh, series of how to play Crusader Kings 2. Um, we left off last time uh, with finding a wife and as I told you before you can always click this arrange marriage and sometimes there's really good options here but I'm not too fond of any of those. Um, so we are going to try something else. We are going to find a character and we're going to basically search far and wide for a wife, a good one. So um, first of all let's go to all and uh, you see all kinds of guys and boys and mm, that's that's not what we are here for. Um, so first of all we need a woman, so we only look for women, um, and she should be adult. Um, now there's people of different faiths, and I don't have personally anything against any of the faiths, but uh, this is the Middle Ages, and here religion matters. So we will go, and you can either search for your own religion, which is in this case Catholic, or you can go to religion group, which will include all the other Christian denominations, in this case Orthodox and um, some other Coptic, I think, is in the game. Um, the culture is not, not that um, important. Um, we will look not only at the great houses but also commoners because we're not that big of a deal that we really care at least yet um, so there's something called Diplo range which means can we even contact them or are they too far away to be able to uh, travel to our court or even hear about us so we want them to be able to, so to yes. Uh, we don't want her to be a ruler. And she does... Uh, she, she's, she shouldn't be married already. There is um, certain things you can do about that, <laughs> but... Um, um, that's a little bit too advanced for now. Um, she shouldn't be in prison, but normally at the start of the game there's no one in prison. But uh, yeah, So we have quite a list of women. So another thing that's, that's important um, is that she shouldn't be too old, because you want to have children with her. And uh, this is always based on percentages, so it's, it's never uh, certain. So we can go by age and just scroll down until we are at an age that is um, making sense. I would recommend someone between 16 and 20. Because then you have a lot of um, time to get children. <coughs> Okay, so there are several uh, stats that increase fertility. There is, for example, Lustful, which is a sin, but uh, increases fertility by 20%, which is quite nice. And you have the, um, the diplomatic education line that increases fertility, starting at um, the second level. So she has a 5% increase. And the stewardship, which is this golden one, has also an increased um, fertility. And this is the, the highest level of uh, stewardship education and it gives 15% additional fertility. Um, this is grey eminence, this is the highest Okay, so we want her to have good stats. Good stats for the for one 
uh, part, it is hereditary. Um, your children will get um, stats based on your stats and based on your wife's stats. Um, and another thing is that she will help you govern the, the realm, so you will get a bonus to your um, state diplomacy, martial stewardship, and so on, which is um, for one part based on your own stats and for second part on your spouse's stats and third on uh, your council members stats and this will um, um, influence your realm so we want her to have good stats and um, then there's also hereditary traits which are really good or bad the ones with the green background are the good ones and the one with ones with the red background are bad ones and um, there's I think four really good ones uh, there's quick which gives you plus three to all sk uh, skills and there's the, the even better one called genius which this one is and then there's strong which gives you more health and martial and the fourth one is attractive which gives you a bonus to diplomacy and um, it's really good when you're playing a female ruler which is not that often but gonna make them other rulers turn their heads so um the the list is not that long when you when you count out all the um well they are not really old but they are maybe a little bit uh, too well they're not too old but they are not that great stats wise so um this one has really good stats and um Although she is orthodox, which is another denomination, Christianity than Catholic, what we are, um, she has some bad stats. For example, she is arbitrary. Arbitrary is an outright bad stat. It has no upsides. Um, she's deceitful, which has some bonuses to intrigue. She's ambitious, which so okay she's cynical she's gregarious which is really really good she's homosexual um, but this is the middle ages and um, so gameplay wise this um, this means that her fertility is decreased so she has minus 15% which is uh, offset a little bit by her fertility uh, by her uh, education so she in total has minus 5% and she's stressed although this is also a red um heart this is not hereditary um it also decreases health and fertility um but the genius skills uh, the, the genius trait is really really good so what i'm going to try Although she is stressed and homosexual, we are going to try to make babies with her. So, um, arrange marriage. You can always click this one, but don't do this. <laughs> you could, but this means that her children will be of her line. And we need children of our line. So, um, as you can see, we will lose prestige because she's not really important. We would gain prestige if she was the daughter of king, king for example. And her leash will agree to this marriage. So we will send our marriage proposal to her leash and he will decide. So she has a little bit of say in it, I think but mainly her leash is the one that decides if she's to marry. Again, this is the Middle Ages and 
you don't have as much say in this kind of stuff than you have nowadays. <laughs> um, okay, so um, that's how we found our wife. Uh, and we could probably make a sitcom out of it. No, not really. One is more than enough. Okay, so as you can see, we are not already married because our wife has to get those messages first. The proposal has some time to, to reach the um, guy and as soon as he decides we will have our wife. This will only happen if we either press the spacebar or click here to unpause the game. So let's do that. As you can see this is the lowest um, speed and every few seconds the date changes. We can press plus or minus on the keyboard and it will increase. Oh, something happened and the game automatically uh, pauses. Which is nice since you get time to react. Okay, so Augusta and Count Eberhard are getting married. We can collect a royal aid duty to pay for the ceremonies. So we can either gain 10 gold or we can gain 13 prestige to um, offset that hit. Um, there's two ways to play this and uh, I'm guessing... Okay, so prestige gives you a bonus um, on opinion to your liege and your vassals and to everyone else I guess um, but 10 gold in the beginning is really good uh, as you can see we will get one gold in a month and so this is 10 months worth gold for us that's really good so we'll go for the money and here you see the, the response of the count of Neapolis who is to the diligent Count Eberhard. May you live in harmony and contentment. I accept your suggestion that Count Eberhard and Augusta get married. So, okay. So, now we have a wife. Let's pause again. Um, so, she doesn't like us too much. We have um, several stats that uh, influence this um, opinion. Um, and you see this the same one here again because we are not only her husband but also her liege. Everyone at our court is, is our subject and um, so she gets this twice. Um, yeah, The top one is uh, her opinion of us and the bottom one is our opinion of her. We like her because She's gregarious and she has lots of personal diplomacy. 18 is really high. Um, but we are both ambitious and that can get between peoples. Um, we have no positive prestige, but she has. She has 200 prestige from marrying us, I presume. And that means she gets uh, plus one to our opinion of her. We have religious differences, as I told earlier. She's Orthodox, um, Catholic, and that means uh, basically that there are little differences, and this gives a little bit of a uh, opinion <laughs> drag. Okay, so. Um, let's make her like us a little bit more. Um, special minor title. We have no designated region uh, and can give it to our wife. So now she should like us a little bit more. Yeah, she's now at zero. Okay, so we still have no heir, we still lose our title when we die because we still have no heir. 
And we can recruit a court physician, which is really good to have. But maybe we can just... No, there's no valid candidates. You can see those minor titles, they have all... You can just click on them and m make your vassals or your courtiers those titles and they give, um, as you can see here, uh, opinion boosts, but they also cost a little bit of money. Uh, it's good later in the game when you have powerful vassals, but in our case we only have baron level vassals and they don't matter that much. So we can save the money. Okay. Um, most of the councillor positions are only appointable to men. Uh, the exception being the spy mass, you can always appoint uh, women. In this case, we could uh, actually um, give the title to our wife, but we want his bonus and her bonus, and she already gives us a bonus as our wife. As you can see here, she gives us plus eight to state intrigue as our spouse and she wouldn't give us any more if she was also our spy master so um, the council gives 14 the spouse gives 8 and if it was would be only her I think it would be 16 in total so let's just keep her at home for now okay so let's play the game um, Let's go to speed 2 for now and we can take a look around. Okay, so we are still neighbored by Bavaria and West Francia. Um, the Lords of Alemannia have approved the institution of the title or vocation allowed. Law. Okay, so laws. We can go to laws and see the laws in the county of Württemberg. You can see two different uh, kinds on this side. It's Akinatic, Absolute Cognatic and you can see here Akinatic Cognatic. This is what is in effect right now. Akinatic Cognatic means um, that a son will inherit first for uh, a daughter. Um, if you go Akinatic only sons can uh, um, inherit and if you go absolute cognatic means that um, girls and boys are considered equal uh, according to um, succession. We have agnatic cognatic which is standard in Europe and we have gavelkind. Gavelkind means, means our titles are split evenly among our heirs which means if we have lots of titles and lots of children we will mm, play um, as our oldest son most of the time and he won't um, be inheriting all of the lands we hold as his father <coughs> so our brothers will be inheriting some stuff as well. This is mm, this is really bad if you want to, to acquire a whole realm and stay stable. Okay, so we got a message here. King Carloman, which is our uh, which is not our wait, yes, it's, it's the leash of our leech. King of Middle France here. Has declared Middle Francian holy war for Barcelona on Sultan Ab al Rahman of the Umayyad Sultanate. So they share a border here, small one, but they do. And uh, a holy war for Barcelona. So Barcelona is a duchy level. You go to the Jure duchies. So he will uh, declare war on what is de, de Jure Barcelona, which is this part, and as you can see, there's an overlap. He already um, 
owns this part of Barcelona, but he's going for the rest of it. And he can do so because he's Catholic and this guy is Muslim. So it's a holy war and he can go for this whole region. He has a holy war which means that other Catholics can join him in this war and other Muslims can join the on the defending side. So this guy has 4.4 thousand troops and our king has 2.7 but he has maybe no he has no pacts. So that's going to be interesting. Huh. Well Let's just see what happens there. As you can see, um, he has raised troops from all over the country. And you can always mouse over them and see what type of composition they are and how many people. In the early game, size really matters, so bigger army diplomacy, basically. But even if you're smaller, if you play the game uh, s in a smart way, you can still win against bigger enemies. You can, for example, uh, make mm, territory uh, use of it to your advantage. Okay, so as you can see, money goes slowly up. Prestige will also go slowly up because we have a high diplomacy skill and we are holding counties, vassal baronies, also from technology. Okay, let's go technology. Take a look at that. Um, technology, those are the different um, categories of um, technologies we can improve. Military, economic and cultural and they all have different kinds of stuff that you can increase. So military, it increases the capability of your light, heavy infantry, your cavalry or your siege equipment, which uh, means how, how long it takes for you to besiege stuff. Ships and military organization is uh, like a general um, technology which increases also your levy size and your retinue size not levy size sorry retinues uh, are, I'll go over that later um, so then there's uh, economic advances they determine how how you can upgrade your infrastructure for your castles, your towns, and your churches, which are the three subtype uh, uh, types of, of subholdings: castle, church, town. Um, then improved keeps helps you defend your realm better. Trade practices is for establishing um, trade posts and stuff like that which we probably won't do for a long time and construction is like a, the, the basic um, underlying technology okay your marshal mayor Werner von Reutling uh, has put forward a plan for experimentation with new military technology inspired by a supposedly brilliant inventor and engineer that he has recently befriended. All that is needed is a little funding. Okay, so we can give him the money, which is a lot of money. Um, or we can refuse to, to give him the money. Um, I don't I, I don't think we can give him the money. That's like half our money. No, we have to we have to decline at this point. Normally I would say yes, but it's 
just too much at the moment. Okay, and then there is culture advances. Um, noble customs gives you uh, um, opinion boost with your feudal vassals, such as the guys that run castles. Popular customs with city vassals, such as the guys that run cities. And temple vassals, which is basically bishops. Um, majesty gives you more prestige. And uh, short reign years. Oh, let's pause and see what this is. Ragnar of Dijon Dijonian Peasant Revolt has declared Peasant Revolt. Okay, so yeah, there's always a, a chance for the peasants to rise up. They normally have really bad stats, but they can be quite big sometimes. So here's 800 peasants that disturb the realm. And basically on every single level this peasant revolt can be fought. So the count in which um, I, um, the, the county the count of the county where the rebellion happens can fight against them. The duke can fight against um, the peasants of the county who are who is re responsible for and the king can also do this. Uh, you can also help um, if you from another um, duchy or county um, you will get prestige and opinion boosts uh, if you help him um, but you won't get any um, um bad things happen to you if you don't uh, so let's just let him deal with him by himself for now we don't have the manpower to deal with 800 peasants um, so you can see the wo active wars in the low right corner there's the war against the sultan and the peasant revolt right now uh, back to technology torrents is how uh, you can uh, reduce the opinion penalties of different cultures and religions. And legalism is very important if you want to change any rules and any laws in your county or duchy. Let's go to the military. Here we can see how many um, levies we can raise from our holdings ourselves and from our vassals. This is the total number, and this is a uh, more detailed look at um, the, the uh, troops we can raise. As you can see, 42 plus 52 is almost 93. Uh, is okay, so this is all partial. Um, Let's take a short break to see what is this. King Carloman of Middle Francia has created the title Duchy of Orleans. Okay. So, the Duchy of Orleans um, didn't exist before. The Duchy of Orleans, if we take a look at de jure, de jure uh, duchies, this is the de jure Duchy of Orleans. It consists of those four counties, all of the same color, and he had three of them under his control, and that's why he was able to uh, create it from a theoretical state to an actual state, and give it to this guy. As you can see, this this one is not part of his realm, so although it is the Jure part of uh, the duchy, de facto it is not. And this will give um, this guy and his liege the casus belli to make the de Jure part of this duchy part of the realm. So basically both of them are now allowed to 
declare war on the king of West Francia over this county. I have been spending more time with my wife Augusta lately and though of course we did not marry for love, I can tell it is growing between us. So this is one of the events that can happen um, because of I think the family focus and this changes um, the opinions of mm, myself towards my wife and vice versa. And you can see this when I click here. So increase. So now there's a love for two years, I think. And I think this also increases chances of um, getting a child. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's no longer stressed. This is really good news. Okay. Our knowledge of improved keeps. Ah, yes. Uh, so if we go back to technology, you can you will notice that those gears are turning. Sometimes they don't turn, but if they are turning, they are turning because they are increasing uh, by themselves. And as you can see, this is 4.2 percent because our spy master is studying technology in a country where the level of technology is higher. Um, let's see if... Oh yeah, here it is even bigger because as you can see, if you mouse over this part, this is castle infrastructure 2. Yeah, so it, this is already at 2 here in, in um, Byzantium, so this is why this is even bigger. It's only 4.2 here because it's at 1 in Byzantium, but here it's 2, so it's twice as big. Um, yeah, so this becomes. Um, this increases by itself right now for the Spy Master. And you can also spend points, which I don't have any, to increase it uh, manually. Um, you don't get any points as a count uh, starting at um, starting at uh, uh, Duke levels. You will get those though. Oh, uh, what's this fight? Varian Middle Francians the Eurobar over Saint Gallen. Okay, so this means he will fight over think this is this part. Because it is the Jure part of Bavaria. Yeah. So this king declared war on this king because this king was having trouble against peasants and already in war. And as you can see here by those lines over the country, those are sieged right now. Already conquered or in the process, this, this um, spotted lines means that part of the country is uh, sieged down. And you can see the, the middle emblem here means that it is besieged by the corresponding country. So in order to win a war, you have to um, get um, to 100% basically in, in this game. And to get there, you have to win battles and um, sieges. Oh, your steward, Marquardt, has collected a special type in Württemberg, which means we get 8.2 gold. This is one of the uh, events that can happen if you, if you s look here, collect taxes. 
special type collected. This is 6% chance yearly to happen and that's what happened right now. So we get a little bit of extra money, which is nice. Okay, so our leech, our direct leech is under attack basically because this is part of the duchy of Württemberg. Not the Euro, but de facto. And we can't do anything about that because we only have 350 troops. Well, basically 443, but it's way less than this guy. So we can we could try to help him, uh, but since there's no effort right now, we can't do anything. Oh, look. First of all, my wife is pregnant, which is really, really good. You can see this at the symbol here. And we get a little bit of prestige also. Um, so, let's take a, a break here. Um, the king of Bavaria inherited the county I was aiming for, which is really annoying. So we will send our guy somewhere else. We'll send him to Breisgau, which is also in the, the Euro Duchy of uh, Swabia, Alemania, Alemania. No, it's not. Damn it. But it's the... Uh, damn it. This is going to be hard. But wouldn't be fun if it wasn't. Would it? Okay. So um, let's uh, take a pause here. And thanks for watching.